Hunter x Hunter episode 121. Don't come any closer. Gon doesn't even care? Not even paying attention, though he certainly feels it. Tch! Who do you think you are? Telling me where I can and can't stand. I should have just saved this as a clip so I could insert it in so many of these episodes where I said, you know who's not at war amongst themselves? The ants. That aged well. Joke's on you, Chimera ants. Humans are terrible. Chimera ants zero, humans also zero. Defeat X and X dignity. I feel like Gon would have... Well, I don't know. Yeah, that's... I would have assumed that. I think maybe... If I'm reading this correctly, I think maybe Pito doesn't understand the danger here. But Gon... I mean, you could take out Poof. You could take out Poof. Don't, I know you want to punch something right now. Now that a few episodes have passed after the fight, which the more I think about it, the more I think is actually okay. I don't know. Sometimes friends just need to clear the air. Relationships are tough. There are always going to be assumptions and needs built in somewhere that are selfish. It goes really well when what is selfish for one is also beneficial to the other, but it's rarely perfect and people are not static objects. And even in great friendships, sometimes there's just one or two things that are jutting out that are in glaring opposition to what the other person feels they need to get from the other. But if the other things are in the right place, the bigger, more important things, they end up being superficial in the big picture. And the result is hopefully each of you smoothing out your individual wrinkles. That will probably come for Clue and Gon. Once they're out of this life, threatening situation. There will be a breakdown, but I was going to say before that tangent, I no longer read the leaving of the room as abandonment. It seems more like he just recognized he couldn't solve it in that moment, and the mission is still happening. Like, he just went right back into assisting others. And then here he's like, as soon as this is done, I'm going to go back to Gon. Another thing that Kalua might have in common with Shoot is, I'm struck with how quickly he's got a handle on this situation, or got a handle on himself in this situation. Kalua, to me, so far feels like he's outperforming in a way that was sort of unpredictable beforehand and would only become clear in the actual event, which is a pretty great skill to have. He might. That was a very Gon moment, actually. Everything's fine. Gon will be okay. Kite is surely alive, etc. Some words were said. Nothing's gonna stop Poofy from talking. <laughs> uh oh. Very interesting mix of incentives in this room. There's so many ways this could go. Gon just has to push the envelope at all times. Oh, Gon trying to pin both pieces with one move, but it's not leverage against Poofy. I feel like that definitely just killed someone. We have different versions of the word king. You're so cute! She got trapped. He's a man of ideas. He also can move stuff. He can move without moving. And it would be terrible if anything happened to Kamugi. Yes! Oh my god, I'm so excited to see this compound interest. Most powerful force in the universe. It's even more compounding when it's Yakuza debt. I'll take your time, yeah. Take your time. I was thinking about, it's so weird to say this about Yuppie, who I totally wrote off and made all these jokes about what do you do besides open doors and curtains and, you know, be there and be strong. In some twisted way, I feel bad for him. He's just there. He's just living the life he was born into. He's not really thinking that deeply about it. He doesn't seem to have super malicious motives. This dude is just trying to do his job, being a body for the king. The things that this man has had to deal with today in the last, say, 20 minutes, Yakuza debt, electricity kid, vape, secondhand smoke, losing his staircase, and also his home. None of his family or friends are around, totally abandoned. He's probably very lonely. He lost an eye. He's got this ghost following him for reasons he doesn't understand. He got carpet bombed by a dragon. <laughs> like, it's a lot. Meanwhile, Poofy gets to fly around looking glamorous and glittery. Peter's just sitting in a room doing her healing stuff. It's very complex. I don't really know what to make of it. Just harnessing the power of emotions with higher faculties. 
Oh no, the narr narrator's against you. You're getting the knuckle treatment. By the time Yuppie figures out this mistake, he will already have made his next mistake. That smile though. It's smoke. Yeah, smoke, smoke. It's all smoke. He sacrificed a lot of eyes for whatever all this is. That's a that's a very high number. It's gonna get crazy from here. Yeah. It's a powerful force. The most powerful force in the universe. Oh, uh oh. Oh, three minutes at first felt so short, but now feels so long. Yeah, he knows where you are. He's depleted. He's a sitting duck. It's not great timing. And also two seconds have passed out of the three minutes. But I mean, Knuckle is here. Oh, it's not yeah, he's evolving mentally. It's it's odd. Yeah, Kalu activated his joy of Nen combat. I mean, I feel like a strong breeze might have captured his attention since most of his life was like sitting on stairs, opening curtains. We've seen this a lot in the show and also Freerun. I mean, they're enemies sometimes, but they're also colleagues. They all love the same thing. They all have that in common despite their alliances. And their ideologies almost have to be somewhat similar for them to be in a state where they can use high Nen at all. Although it might feel this way. In life, the people you meet are not at all a random distribution. They're very particular to you and your choices. I was joking about Piru having a career after the king. Maybe it could be Yupi if he wasn't about to be crushed to death by debt. Let's be friends. <laughs> oh, okay. This is a gambit. I've been fooled too many times by moral already. It's smoke. <laughs> it's smoke. It's the last smoke monster. I'm doubling down. It's a gambit. <laughs> yeah! Hell yeah. Moral man, he's never, never stops. Wait, what? But there's blood. This is really confusing. Did I celebrate too fast? Oh, is it Nav? Nav? Malirium? Malirium, probably. Moral actually was beaten. Maybe he got Malirium. Follow the trail of blood. Oh, I got knuckle. All right, moral. Can you hold your breath for three minutes? What is that? Yeah, I mean knuckles here. He understands the situation. I had a feeling this was coming. Knuckles is the kind of guy to have this unbeatable APR power and then decide that his own power is cheap. Like, I don't want to win that way. He's the kind of gangster to take all your money from your gambling debts and then later give it back to you. Knuckles the kind of guy to ignore a stray dog and then end up running an animal shelter. Knuckles the kind of guy to be blackmailed and manipulated and then go on to help the perpetrator. Come to think of it, Knuckles the kind of guy to defeat Yuppie and then take pity on him. <laughs> It's like a sponge. No. Knuckle the kind of guy to remove APR to save moral. And we use up so much to get here. Moral totally ready to die. His desperate cry wouldn't have reached Knuckle without God's accomplice. I have a bad feeling that actually Million just weakened their position. I don't think Knuckle stays out of this. Knuckle! 
yeah, that was not great, but also it was the best thing. Maybe we will get Knuckles soloing Yupi. Knuckle not doing as good a job of compartmentalizing his emotions. A what? Well, this there's precedent for this. They're all not really relevant anymore. They're all so weakened. This is a very bizarre sort of defeat. It's a lot more to Yuppie than I imagined. <laughs> He's like the biggest... There's a lot of surprises in this arc. Yuppie is one of the biggest surprises. It's a deep personal confusion. Can he change back? Is he just stuck like that? With the Studio Ghibli octopus arm? He just like woke up. <laughs> there are a lot of things I expected from this arc, you know, death, Gon screaming, people yelling Gon, epic Nen combat. Yupi Enlightenment was not on my bingo card. Maybe there's some gratitude to be had there. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, terrible defeat for Knuckle. I mean, Moral's alive. Yeah, it's a pretty overwhelming defeat on the chessboard, Gungi board. But you're still around. I'm mad at you. Yeah, you know, you're partly responsible for raising a big softy, you big softy. Who's left? Is it just Kalu and Gon? And Ikalgo, secret weapon. And Pom in a sack. <laughs> we lost the battle, but we gained an gained unlikely friend. We're still the king, yeah. Oh, he's not doing well. I, I don't know if this is the right thing to hear at this moment. Shinasek! What are you talking about? <laughs> you look great! No idea what, what you mean. He's done. That's probably his last mission. At least he's doing something. There's still two royal guards. Also, Gon could use something. Right. It's also unclear if Netero will even be able to do anything about the king. They're all sort of assuming that Netero is going to body the king. We don't really know. Actually, Lenable came up in the poof scene. I'm actually thinking now that if the king were to return, Gon can pin him too to Kamugi. And if that's the case, if that makes the key difference, it's possible that Gon's rage almost cost him everything. And the Kalua holding him back saved everything. But I mean, this, this is a lot of speculation at this point. I think MVP of this episode goes to Yupi, who, speaking of Gungi, is moving his own pieces. Go figure. The middle child, the one that's just kind of there. Did Yupi just become my favorite royal guard? Separately, it's crazy how much of a roller coaster Knuckles' role is in this arc. Every episode is a crash and then a high and a crash. In the last, what, three episodes? Four episodes? He fell for the bait. Got last minute saved by Kalua. Redeemed himself by landing a bunch of hits, getting in sync with Moral, and then just majorly lost the battle. Strategically, at least. I mean, it still feels like a win to me from the comfort and zero danger of my chair with absolutely no skin in the game. It's really quite something that in this, what, 10 episode battle between this buff middle child, Chimera Ant, and Knuckle and Moral and Shoot, that they all end up being winners in an emotional sense. The only loser in this episode is... Nov's scalp, and maybe, definitely speculating, but Pito and Poof's relationship. Gon and Poof also make a very interesting match because they're both, in their in different ways, very proud. Poof, the kind of person to be inwardly tormented by self-doubt and all the different possibilities of what could and could be and ways he's going wrong, what he should and shouldn't do, yet be bitterly stubborn when it comes to anyone telling him what to do. I love how provoked he got when Gon gave him orders. It feels very fitting, though to be fair, that might be how anyone acts when meeting Gon if he's not on your side. Gon can be a little bit bossy. I feel like I should feel slightly disheartened 
part when it comes to actually looking at the plan and trying to take out the royal guards and the king in light of the way the battle has progressed so far like we've lost a lot of people though thankfully they didn't die without any real significant progress towards anything it was like a lot of energy exp expenditure and it's lost to remove no units in fact if anything you might have made them stronger but that's not really what i'm feeling what i'm feeling is that it's not even really clear what the lines are anyway speaking of gunji there's something bigger going on that is no longer about the battle for this compound between the king's side and the hero's side there's more of a spiritual battle being fought and who are the good guys and who are the the bad guys along that level of analysis are not one-to-one -one entirely with the respective factions or sides which is why yuppie and knuckle can end the battle feeling sort of in the same place and not really at odds this whole thing started to come undone significantly the minute they carpet bombed kamugi that horrible awkwardness of oh i really thought i was coming here to squish some insects this is not how i pictured this going at all entering a small blind child and the king like crying his silent invisible tears for his kamugi and it's just become more apparent since then. Which makes it really weird because like I'm no longer even rooting for a side necessarily. Especially after this UP episode. I think this is the, the nail in the coffin for me. Like I won't necessarily be thrilled anymore if the plan goes perfectly according to what they envision and they just kill everyone. You know, it feels like there's something more or better that could happen. It really depends on how it goes down and who they are in the process. And I think, amazingly, a lot of this will hinge on Gon. 